<laughs> Hi there. Welcome to the Animals Naturally podcast with me, Suzanne. The aim of this podcast is to give you ideas and advice on how to care for your animal more naturally. There's a whole world of complementary therapies and holistic approaches that you can use to make your animal's life more naturally healthier and happier. In this edition of the podcast, I'm going to give you some ideas on how to care for your dog's dental health with more holistic approaches. So first of all, how healthy do you think your dog's teeth are? Despite the importance of good dental health, it's something we can often overlook in our dogs. According to the NHS, a person should brush their teeth twice a day, but there isn't the same definitive advice for dogs. Although the Royal Veterinary College does advise that brushing is one of the best ways to keep your pet's teeth and gums healthy. So first of all, do you know what the signs of good canine dental health are? There are several signs to look for, including your dog having no bad breath. A smelly breath can be a sign of poor dental health. Another sign is that your dog isn't drooling. Some dogs do naturally drool more than others. However, drooling can be a sign of dental health issues. Another sign is if your dog is struggling to eat. You may think your dog is being fussy eating. If they seem to pick up their food, it may not actually be fussiness. Instead, it may be due to some dental issues and there's problems with their teeth or gums. There are other signs too, but if you notice any of these or have any inkling that your dog may have a dental issue, then do speak to your veterinary surgeon for some professional advice. So why is dental health important for your dog? There's several reasons for having good dental health, including it helps prevent teeth loss. Dogs can lose their teeth due to poor dental health. This can mean a change of diet might be necessary. Preventing dental pain is of course really important. Gum disease and problems with the teeth can cause an immense pain. It's important to remember that dogs are amazing animals and can be very tolerant of discomfort even if it means that they have to endure pain to eat. Never assume that your dog's teeth must be okay as he or she is still eating. Dogs can get gum disease and have jagged or loose teeth amongst other issues, which means they're in pain. Indirect reasons for good dental health for your dog are that it helps maintain healthy digestion. If your dog is in pain due to dental pain, he or she may not be eating efficiently. Not chewing food well can make a difference. Another reason for having good dental health is that it helps their organs keep in good condition. According to VCA hospitals, when a pet develops dental disease, a significant quantity of bacteria resides within the mouth and the oral tissues. These bacteria can enter the bloodstream and travel to other areas within the body, causing distant or systemic effects. There are three organs that are especially susceptible to the spread of oral bacteria, the heart, the liver and the kidneys. I think it's really important to remember your dog, particularly in later years, may experience some kidney or liver problems, or say heart as well, where actually the dental health has been a key contributor to that developing. So if you ha- it's never too late to make a change to your dog's diet and make sure they've got good dental health. Um, but certainly it's a, it can really make a difference to other parts of the body and overall health. Another reason that having good dental health is important is that if your dog has dental pain, he or she may find it difficult to not show discomfort. So behavioural issues may appear, although you may not realise it's due to the teeth, of course. If your dog's behaviour changes or doesn't want to do activities that he or she used to, it could be due to dental health problems. Remember that you, yourself, if you've got dental issues, your emotional and physical health are often affected. The same is true for your dog. There are other reasons, of course, that having good dental health is really is really important. But those three issues about having maintaining healthy digestion, keeping good organ health and behavioural reasons are just some of the ways reasons that it's actually really important. So what can you do to help your dog's dental health stay in good, um, good condition? Well, first of all, brushing is a good way to start. Prevention is better than cure, so brushing your teeth, your dog's teeth is definitely a good idea. This is my first top tip for your dog's dental health, but how should you go about this? First of all, find a suitable toothbrush. A gentle, soft bristled children's toothbrush is ideal, or you can get a specialist pet toothbrushes. But you can also use your finger with a bit of toothpaste and rub around in their mouths. Use a good toothpaste. 
Many human toothpastes are unsuitable, but you can get special dog toothpastes. At the time of right, at the time of talking in this podcast, a company called Door West Herbs have a roast dinner toothpaste for dogs. I'll put a link in the notes. Some holistic veterinary surgeons also recommending using a small amount of coconut oil too. Practice cleaning your dog's teeth. Your dog may not like it done straight away. Some are more happy with having their mouths looked at than others. So do a little bit at a time and then they let they, they will get used to it. Remember to reward your dog with praise and a tasty treat when they let you brush their teeth. And start young if you can. If you have a puppy, then get them used to having their mouth gently handled regularly. Try and brush your dog's teeth at least once a week. If you can do it more often, even daily, that's great. But as often as possible is fine. Try and be regular. So for instance, in the evening or first thing in the morning. Most animals like some routine, including our dogs. If your dog has tartar buildup or signs of dental disease, so the gums may be obviously um, not the healthy salmon colour, for instance, then do speak to your um, veterinary surgeon and get your dog's teeth checked professionally. It may be that a dental examination and treatment like descaling is required first. So the next tip for improving your um, canine dental health is um, nutrition. So what you feed your dog can make a huge difference to dental health. This is in terms of the type of food, but also in what nutrients the food contains. Canine nutrition can be a controversial subject. This is largely because it's a multi-million or multi-billion pound dollar industry. Unfortunately, this means that large companies with massive marketing budgets can promote products which aren't actually that ideal for your dog, but nevertheless are very convincing to you as a dog owner that they are beneficial. So should you use dry food or moist food for your dog's dental health, you might be wondering. This isn't a straightforward answer. Many holistic vets do recommend a raw food diet, which is usually moist, as being better for overall health. However, there are some dry foods which can be beneficial. Not all dog food is the same. That is an important message to remember. According to a vet in the Veterinary Times um, recent, or a little while ago, um, Marge Chandler, she said that actually moist foods may perform similarly to a typical dry food in their effect on plaque and calculus accumulation. Another thing you may be wondering is if you should use dental sticks for your dog. So yes and no. So it's a bit of a, um, maybe it might be helpful, maybe not. It's definitely the case with dental sticks. They can be very beneficial. The chewing action can help with promoting dental health, but not all of them are helpful. From personal experience, I know this is the case. I fed my dog, um, who I love dearly, a well-known brand of dental stick every day for years. He loved them. And I believed at the time the marketing said that they would help care for the teeth, but no. He ended up with periodontal disease in his mid-teenage years and had to have teeth removed. I was so upset. I would thought I'd been doing the right thing, feeding him these dental sticks. I know my experience isn't isolated. So my top tip is yes to use a dental chew, but use ones that are natural. In the UK, there are some available using natural ingredients from several companies, including Lily's Kitchen, Fourth Glade and many others too. And that's the case around the world as well. You'll find that some natural dental chews. So what nutrients can help your dog's dental health? Antioxidants are really important in helping your dog to maintain good health and they can help with good dental care. One of their roles of antioxidants is to reduce inflammation, which can help with maintaining good gum health. There's many foods which contain good sources of antioxidants, including fruits and vegetables. Seaweed is another um, beneficial um, nutrient for your dog. Um, veterinary research in 2018 looked at the effect of edible treats containing um, seaweed. And this research found that the consumption of edible treats containing this seaweed efficiently decreased plaque and calculus accumulation in the dogs. Fennel is another um, herb, natural herb, that contains a variety of nutrients that can help promote good dental health. So should you use a raw food diet for your dog's health and his teeth? Well, a raw food diet is becoming more commonly used around the world. Although in reality, it's important to remember, many dogs until the 20th century were largely on raw food diets anyway, but just because there wasn't the mass production of dog foods that we have now, which are largely produced for our convenience as owners. Many holistic veterinary surgeons do recommend a raw food diet. This is for general health reasons, including to promote good dental health. 
There can be some scepticism though. As is the case with anything, it's the type of food you use and how you use it which makes a difference. Not all raw food diets are the same. You can get more information on raw feeding, including how to find a veterinary surgeon specialising in raw food, at the Raw Feeding Veterinary Society, and I'll put the note in the uh, the links in the notes. If you're unsure if your dog has the right diet to help maintain the best possible dental health, then speak to your veterinary surgeon for advice. You can also find holistic veterinary surgeons who use an integrated approach with veterinary care around the world. If you'd like help finding a holistic veterinary surgeon for you near your um, location, then please email me at info at taranet.co.uk. So my third dog dental health tip is to use complementary therapies. There's many complementary therapies that you can use to promote good dental health for your dog. This includes veterinary homeopathy and herbal medicine. You can find many veterinary surgeons around the world who specialise in homeopathy and herbal medicine. It's important to always get professional advice so that your dog can get the most benefit from these therapies. Other integrated approaches um, are that veterinary surgeons often use laser therapy to help treat dental conditions as well. So in conclusion, your dog's dental health is really important. It can be considered the foundation for overall good health. There's many ways that you can care for your dog's dental health, including using holistic approach. So in short, look out for the signs of good dental health. Does your dog have um, no, no foul smelling breath? He's got clean breath, no bad breath at all. There's not excessive drooling and he's not struggling to eat. Consider as well um, the benefits of good dental health. It is, as I said, can be the foundation for overall health. Consider brushing your dog's teeth, consider what food your dog, dog is having and consider using complementary therapies as well. If you would like any help finding a veterinary surgeon or complementary therapist for your animal, as I say, you can email me at info at And remember that if your dog is unwell or on any kind of medication or supplement, then speak to your veterinary surgeon first before using any supplement or therapy, even natural ones, to avoid any possible issues. And if you know somebody who would find this podcast useful, then do please share it with them. You can find my website at taranet.co.uk. Taranet is a leading international complementary and holistic approaches website for animals, which aims to give you simple, straightforward advice. And I hope you found this podcast episode useful. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>